So what happened with the Cash for Clunkers program? The U.S. government's car allowance rebate system provided a $3,500 to $4,500 rebate to new car buyers whose old vehicle met certain fuel efficiency conditions and who took possession of a more fuel efficient vehicle. The program ran in late July and August. Dubbed cash for clunkers, cars cost American taxpayers $3 billion. What was the result? We don't know. Any benefit of cars won't be known until early next year as the problem of demand redistribution is more fully understood. The problem is that we don't really know where the buyers of the new cars came from. Were they buyers already intent on purchasing? Were they buyers intent on purchasing in the next three or six months but who accelerated their purchase to take advantage of the program? Or were they buyers who hadn't contemplated a purchase but did so because of the program? We don't know. Looking just at the new car market, expectations are pretty grim for the last quarter of the calendar year. Despite anecdotal evidence last month from dealers that cars were flying off the lots, GM sales plummeted more than 20% compared with the same month last year, and Chrysler was off more than 15% from a year ago. Not all dealers found cars to be a lemon. Ford saw sales increase more than 17%, and Japanese manufacturers Honda and Toyota saw increases of 9.9 and 6.4% respectively. One promising sign unrelated to cash for clunkers was an increase in sales of the Ford F-150 pickup. Not covered under the government's program, the pickup is perennially the most sold vehicle in America. It's also the vehicle most used by contractors and construction workers, potentially a doubly good sign. Our interpretation of the sales data is alarming. Effectively, the $2.88 billion used for the CARS program went to foreign-owned businesses. That's hardly the type of success the pro-union, pro-American business camp should like. Maybe the unions won't notice after the huge chunk of GM and Chrysler the government gave them. Of course, smart money is on the government running those businesses into the ground, essentially screwing one of their most valued constituencies. Cars is probably the first sign of many that the government can't align itself with the interests of even companies it owns. That doesn't bode well for the public option in the healthcare debate now, does it? Tell truth to power. Hear the real story. Think for yourself. Join the conversation at econmilitia.com. Take back your inalienable rights.